By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Edgeman Championships. And we have reached round number four, and that means we get to see the series decks. Yes, yes, yes. And in this episode, we have two, like, old school old stars, especially one that I know very well. We have Ervin from the uh, Dwarven Warriors Cup. You know, that's one of the things, things he organizes. He's done a lot for old school magic here in the Netherlands. He's playing with a line dip deck. It's uh, blue and white with, of course, some splashing, you know, for the obvious cards. Very strong deck. He's taking on French player Clovis from the Old Man of the Sea crew in The Hague. And he's playing Counterburn, another one of those decks that's been doing quite well. It's then, of course, red and blue. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And talking about that description in that same description below, you will also find a beautiful link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Yes, yes, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron and support the channel that way. And the cool thing is, if you become a member, it already starts for just $1 a month. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. But it is all the way at the end of the video. We're not there yet. Don't worry. We're actually just beginning. And uh, we're now going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Erwin. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Erwin. And I'm not surprised this deck is doing quite well here at this tournament. Because yeah, this is a strong deck. It's as simple as that. It's blue, white with your usual splash cards in there. Like Regrove, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And uh, you know what makes this deck so strong is that... Blue gives you, of course, access to the power, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, and also the Mana Drain, which is really good. And your Brain Geyser, don't underestimate Brain Geyser here. But also it gives you access to the Serendip Afrits, one of the best creatures in old school. Talking about the best creatures in old school, uh, White, of course, gives you access to Sarah Angel. So you just have a lot of good weapons to work with. And of course, when you're playing White, we're seeing a lot of like strong decks doing well at old school tournaments with White because it gives you access to Disenchants and Swords to Plowshares and also to Divine Offering. Don't underestimate Divine Offering. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed a lot here at these Swedish tournaments, uh, Suchi is very popular for obvious reasons. There's no mana burn, so it's simply a 4 4 4 4. Some people say, oh, it's overpowered. I can tell you from experience, it's basically for life for your opponent because the opponent is going to board in Divine Offerings. Divine Offerings, you know, they can kill a Mistress Factory, they can kill the Moxen, you know, they always have a target, they can kill an, a Chaos Orb. But when the opponent is also playing with Suchis, it gets even better because they end kill a creature and they gain life which is usually really good. You know, a little bit of life gain can really, you know, balance a match in your favor. So Suchi, yes, it's good, a 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. You know, you cannot complain about that. But remember, it is a creature and an artifact, so there are a lot of ways to get rid of it. That's basically my point. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, we just see a lot of, like, obvious includes. If I would make a blue-white deck and, you know, I, my only idea was I just want to build a good deck... This is probably what I would end up on. What's interesting here, of course, is that there's no red. A lot of these uh, line bolt decks, um, or sorry, line dip decks tend to play with lightning bolt as well, making it line dip bolt decks, <laughs> you know, if you can still follow me. But then, of course, you need to make space for red, making uh, the rest of your cards maybe a little bit more inconsistent. Maybe you will not always have to double white for Sarah Angel. The casting of the brain guys will get a little bit more difficult. So by keeping it just mainly blue and white, your, your mana base... It's a little less shaky, I guess. Um, you know, then again, it's easy to, to, to build in red. I guess if you don't, you go a little bit more on the control route than if you would play with red. And a lot of these decks that do play with red only include the Lightning Bolts and the Wheel of Fortune. That's basically it. Sometimes a Fireball as well for some extra power. But, you know, that's about it. Usually there are no red creatures involved. Hence the name Line Dip Bolt. But here we just see the line and the dip. So yeah, a very strong deck. But he's actually playing against another really strong deck. A Counter Burn deck that has been doing quite well as well uh, at this tournament. Let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Clovis. 
And here we see the deck of Frenchman Clovis. So this is really your counterburn deck. And this deck has been doing uh, very well here at the tournament. Uh, Clovis is not the only person playing with counterburn today. And I believe uh, all the players that are playing it are doing quite well. And for obvious reasons, like this deck gives you so many weapons to work with, right? You've got your aggressive creatures, Flying Man, Surrender Befreed. In this case, we also see two Suchis. Of course, your Mistress Factories. So you've got those that aggressive um creature base and you can combine that with a lot of burn we see psionic blast chain lightning lightning bolt fireball so as soon as you're on like what 12 against this deck trouble starts right because they can just mow you down with direct damage one of the issues with this deck though is that you can run out of gas and that's exactly where the restricted and power cards come into play right we see wheel of fortune we see time twister we see ancestral recall Time Walk, another good one if you've got enough creatures on the board, right? You can just have that extra combat step. Um, playing against this deck is tough. You know, ideally you would want to have some kind of life gain. If you do, the situation gets a lot better, you know, because this is definitely what I call a sprint deck, right? You just want to burn, 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 tap your creature sideways, try to kill your opponent as fast as possible. And the longer the game, uh, game takes, usually the better the chances are for the opponent, depending on the deck the opponent is playing. But there is a pretty big but um, because of those draw sevens. And of course, remember, he's also splashing black for Demonic Tutor Mind Twist. Because of those cards, even when a game takes longer, you know, they can tutor for a Time Twister or a Wheel, you know, and just get a fresh seven again, burn you out. Or, you know, they've got that one Fireball inclusion, which I really like in this deck. So if a game kind of drags on and you've got your opponent on, let's say, six or something, and you just cannot push through, but you also have your counter spells to kind of control the game. And of course, that one mana drain. So you've got that going, you know, so you don't have to worry too much about dying yourself. But it's kind of like in this in this state of nothingness, right? You're both like top decking. Then a fireball can give you the win, right? Because you've got a lot of lands probably accumulated on your board. So time your fireball, right? That can give you the victory. Talking about one offs, we also see a one of Black Vice. Again, I like that because there will be situations where you maybe have a draw seven in hand and that black vice in hand. That means that basically that black vice is turned into an extra bolt in your deck, right? You play vice, then you do the draw seven. Then even if, if you're not finding any useful things in your hand, which probably you will with this deck, right? You'll find more burn. But anyway, you can pass the turn to your opponent and he's going to take three damage regardless. You know, okay, yes, he could maybe play out an instant or something, but in most scenarios, he would take an extra three and usually against these decks, taking an extra three really, really pushes you over that, that point and, and gives you the game. So yeah, a very strong deck by Clovis. I'm not surprised that it's doing so well. And now that we've discussed both of the decks, this means one thing. We are ready for the match. Let's go. Game number one. Here we go. So we've got Ervin sitting on the left, taking on Clovis on the right. Look at that. He's taking a mulligan. Erwin is playing a dominantly blue-white deck, so a line and dip. And Clovis is playing counterburn, so blue and red. Both players are splashing the black cards, right? Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And I believe that Erwin is also splashing Regrowth in his deck. Here we see a Flying Man turn one. So that's that instant pressure here by Clovis. Let's see. There we see a Zavanna Lion, so also a turn one play. Both players kind of doing what they want to do. A quick bolt, though, on the Lion. Clovis untapping here. Probably going to turn that uh, Flying Man sideways. Going to deal the first uh, damage of the game. We see Erwin dropping to 19. There's a City of Brass tapping the Brass. Are we going to see a Surrender Befreet here? It's a very aggressive opening. Noah Mind Twist is probably better even for Clovis, but yeah, Mind Twist for two. So not too painful, but I, I get this. You just want to play it out as quickly as you can. Passing the turn here. Let's see what Erwin can do. Also took a mulligan, of course. So already started with a card less. He wasn't on a draw, so that, you know, is something at least. Compensates a little. Here's the Demonic Tutor. Probably going to tutor for Ancestral Recall here, right? To kind of get cards back. And then it's going to be interesting to see when he times that Ancestral Recall. Really has to wait for the right moment. Remember, Clovis is playing with four counter spells in his deck and a mana drain. So if you time that Ancestral Recall wrong and you run into a counter spell, that could be disastrous for Erwin. But first, let's see what Clovis can do. Only two cards, well, three cards in hand. Now two cards in hand after playing the island. There we go. I guess now Clovis can decide. 
I don't want to staple the cards. And there's the attack. So Ervin here dropping to 18. And there's a pass, so playing nothing out, really kind of signaling to Ervin that he's got counter magic. And this kind of means if you're Ervin and you've, you've looked up that Ancestral Recall, if that's the card, exactly you don't want to play it out. You don't want to run into that counter spell. So he's just passing the turn. So a little bit of stare down going on, and I think this works really well for, for Clovis. Because look at that Mishra's Factory, you can use that to attack as well next turn. So, I mean, he's fine with the situation. Here we see Savannah Lines. That's a good blocker for that factory. When we do see a counter spell here, does that mean that he's got another counter spell in hand? There we see the Ancestral Recall. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I am surprised, to be honest, with that uh, counter spell play by Clovis. And I was actually expecting him to have like a second counter spell, but that wasn't the case. So, really, here, the moment for Erwin to get those three cards. And this could be a game changer here in game one. But I mean, still looking good for Clovis, don't get me wrong. He's not attacking with the Mishra's Factory, by the way. Tapping three. Oh, there's a Time Twister. That's why he didn't counter. I shouldn't underestimate Clovis here. He's too good to be underestimated. So he already had this plan from the start, probably. So countering away the Lions, allowing him to cast the, uh, the Ancestral Recall, knowing that he would go and uh, play the Time Twister. So well done here. Very good magic. So he's going to draw a fresh 7 as well, and so does Ervin. And I have to say, I like, I mean, I like this, these, these games where, you know, two competitive decks go face-to-face. -face. Yes, you see these decks quite a lot, Line Dip and, and Counter Burn, but it's so interesting to see two good players with really good decks going face-to-face -face and you know, looking at them, looking at the decisions that, that they make. It's just very interesting. And I also love to draw sevens at Time Twister. It's just fun. It's like you're starting the game all over again. So here's a Mox Jet by Clovis passing the turn. It's not doing anything else. But remember, Clovis playing four counter spells and a mana drain probably has counter magic in his hand. And he's got the mana to cast it as well. So it's going to be tough here for Ervin to decide what he uh, can do. Starting here with the Mox Emerald. I mean, this is also where I feel Savannah line sh uh, shines because it's just one white. So, and it's it's not a big issue for Clovis, but it's not great for him. He doesn't like it when there's a Savannah lines on the board. But, you know, it's like, okay, you want to counter it? Fine, I can still cast something else. Ooh, this is good. So a strip mine, probably going to flow to blue, then go to combat, go to second main, then it's out of the out of the pool. And look at that, not even tapping it, realizing that Ervin's probably going to do that. So don't want to, doesn't want to take the extra point of damage. And are we going to see a creature now? Maybe a Surrender Befreak from the side of, uh, of Ervin. There's a Demonic Tutor. Ooh, I wonder what he's going to look up with the Tutor. So many options. Like one of the cards you can go for, obviously, here is Mind Twist. The thing is, he doesn't have enough mana to really... Cast a Mind Twist now, so he would have to pass the turn. Then Clovis can untap and, you know, create a scenario where he will have two blue open to potentially counter the the Mind Twist. So it's kind of double, right? You also want to do something now that Clovis cannot counter. So another card that maybe he could look up here is uh, Black Lotus to maybe cast, for example, a Sarah Angel. That could be another line of play. Again, it really depends on the card that cards that he has in hand. For example, if he has a Brain Geyser in hand, he could consider also going for the Lotus to play a Brain Geyser for three. That would also be quite a good play. But yeah, so many options here for, for Ervin. So I wonder, I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, so many cards now for him as well, I believe. Yeah, passing the turn, right? I mean, he's got seven in hand now, I think. And maybe he looked up a counter spell. That could be another line as well. Although I don't think so, because he's kind of behind on board, right? Because Clovis can now attack for three. And yes, he could then run into a Disenchant. There's a uh, Badlands, attack for one. That Flying Man's doing work, by the way. I think all the damage dealt uh, to Ervin so far is from that single Flying Man. There's a second! Double team! And now these Flying Man are really starting to become uh, a problem for Ervin. You don't really want to spend the swords on a Flying Man. Then again, you're on 15. You're going to take two every turn. He's got to try to resolve a Flyer here. Like a Surrender would be quite good. Okay, Mace. Mace is something. Also a card you cannot counter. Now 
Let's see what else he could do. You know, ideally, what you want to have here is maybe a mox, you know, tap three. Can you do that? If it's a mox FR, you could then play Serena past turn if counter magic still open, because I believe those two duels at the back there, it's a little bit of glare. I think they're both Tundras. There's the attack, two flying man, probably going to send one back. Ooh, is he going to cast a Swords on one of them? I think he is. There's a Swords. So Clove is going back up to 20, sending one of those back. And again, I think if you're Clovis, you're kind of like fine, like Swords for Flying Man, that's that's good. That's another factory, that could be interesting as well. I, I think we, we will get to a point pretty soon where Clovis will start attacking with his Mistress factories as well. So passing back here to Erwin. Okay, finding a land there, that's good. Passing the turn, so wow, very patient. There we see a bolt on the life total here. Wow, so Erwin dropping to 12. Does this also signal that he's thinking about exactly getting in there with the factories? Animating both, attacking for five. And this is difficult, because if you want to use a maze against the factory, you can. But then that maze is untapped and you can tap it to pump the other factory. So it's only like saves you one damage. Tapping three, are we going to see a Psionic Blast? Psionic Blast here, that's actually quite good. Does mean two damage for Erwin, dropping to ten. Probably going to send back the other factory, taking one from the Flying Man. Exactly going to go to nine. I mean, if you're Clovis, you're thinking like, okay, I still dealt three points of damage. That's not too bad. There's an island. Another Flying Man. Wow. I mean, these Flying Mans have really been the, uh, the MVP so far of this match. There is another Tundra, tapping one. What is he gonna do? Ancestral Recall. So I guess he looked up an Ancestral with that tutor. No counter magic by Clovis. Okay, this is a way to kind of get back into it, Erwin, with this uh, Ancestral Recall play. Three new cards, hopefully for him they're good. I think like a Disenchant would already be quite nice, right? Because I'm sure Clovis is gonna animate the factory next turn. You could Disenchant that. Gonna tap three here. What are we gonna see for three? There's a Serenipa Freet. Okay, that's quite good. Can also then start thinking about attacking. Passing the turn here back to Clovis. Clovis planning on doing something on end step. Tapping three. Are we gonna see a Psionic Blast? And that's on the Serenip. Yeah, you would kind of be tempted to do it on the life total here of Erwin since he's on nine, right? Get him to five. Maybe burn him out, but now you've got some guaranteed attacks if you go for the Surrendip instead. Right? And then when you go for the Surrendip, you're going to deal two damage anyway, so that's already half of the damage that you would have dealt with the Psionic Blast. Here's the attack. There's the Mace, probably on the factory. Exactly two damage here. He's on seven. Oh, that's so risky against this burn deck. Remember, four chain, four bolts, three Psionic Blasts, I believe, and a Fire Bolt. So. And yes, some of his direct damage is in the bin, but not that much. We've got one bolt and one blast in the in the graveyard of Clovis. Ooh, can I see what card that is? Is that a land or is that a mind twist? Oh, it's a Serenip. Serenip of Freed. Oh, the glare is getting more and more annoying, but at least we can see it's a Serenip 3-4 flying. So that's good again. The, the downside, of course, of the Surrender Pefrit is the fact that Erwin will also take damage from it. And there are a few lines here that Clovis could do. He could actually consider attacking with everything, which would not be great, right? But he could push one more damage through, get Erwin on six, then maybe finish it off with a double bolt. Then again, Erwin is going to take a damage from the Surrender anyway. Exactly. So here's just a pass turn. There's a damage. Going to go to six. Are we going to see double bolt in the upkeep? No, we're not. Untap, upkeep. And now we're probably going to see that draw step. That is going to be so tough for Erwin. Also looking at the life total of Glove as he's still on a very safe 18. 
There is the attack though. I'm liking this line. He's like, I'm not going to keep it as a blocker. Surrender is not working out for me as a blocker since I'm on six. There's the attack. Glove is, uh, Glove is dropping to 15. What will be next? Six versus 15. And of course now next turn, he's got a pretty okay attack lined up. He could attack with flying men, two flying men and then factory. Of course you have that mace. Perhaps we're going to see another blocker here being cast by Erwin. Going to tap two, three here. Another Surrendip. Ooh, are we going to see a Sarah Angel instead? Leaf. Oh yeah, he tapped down four. What could he cast for four? Is that a Brain Geyser? It's a Brain Geyser, I believe, for two. So casting a Brain Geyser for two. Man, this is exciting. Can Erwin find a way out of here? I mean, his deck is full of answers. A Swords would also be a great help, right? Or a Disenchant. Six is his life total, 15 for his opponent. Club is here in round number four of the Edge Man. And I believe both decks uh, have won all their matches so far. There's the pass. Okay, so let's see what can Clovis do. Draw a card for turn. There's an island. That's an old man of the sea stamp, by the way, on that island, which is pretty sweet. And yeah, here we see the animate. So I'm expecting some disenchant shenanigans or at least the swords. Or maybe not. Wow. At the moment he sent back the factory, you kind of know what time it is. That he doesn't have a Swords or Disenchant. So now Erwin on four. Oh, are we going to see a Psionic Blast or a Fireball? No, a Suchi. going to see a Suchi. I mean, that Suchi could actually end up working against you if Erwin has a Divine Offering. Then again, if he would have had a Divine Offering, he would have used it in combat when uh, Clovis animated that Mishra's Factory. So it's pretty safe to say that Erwin doesn't have an answer to Artifacts at the moment. Oh, you can see Erwin Fink. Perhaps he's considering countering this. I think if you have a counter spell, you have to, right? I mean, this Suchi is a huge problem at the moment. He's on four. I mean, next turn, Clovis could then kill him. Well, I mean, he can keep the surrender untapped, I guess. But let's let's see what's going to happen here. So he's going to take a damage, drop to three, right? We've seen that. Untapping everything, drawing a card for turn. There's another land. Okay, a Library of Alexandria. Don't believe he's got seven in hand. <laughs> what can he do here? I mean, it's looking very bleak for Erwin at the moment, right? Also because the surrender, of course, hurts him every single turn. Look at that, he is attacking. I like this, man. I like this philosophy. I guess, you know, surrender always attacks. Clove is dropping here to 12. A balance could be something here as well. He would at least take out two creatures on the side of Clovis. Of course, it doesn't work against the uh, Mishra's Factory because it's now a land. It's not animated, but it could help a little. And I guess Erwin is now really going through his hand, trying to find a way out of this. Going to tap two. Yep, there's the balance I talked about. Are we going to see a counterspell here on the balance? I believe we are, right? Tapping one. Are we going to see a bolt? Oh, there's a bolt. Is this the end of the road? Are we going to see counterspell, though? I think we are, else Erwin would have said, you, you got this one. We're going in slow-mo. Is this the end of the road? What is he doing here? Tapping three. There's a power sink. Oh, wow. Yeah, tapping four instead, exactly, because he's got... If you play power sink for two, he had enough mana, but playing it for three. Wow, this power sink. Very important here for Erwin. But again, this is not the, really the end for Clovis, right? He gets to keep his Suchi. 
gets to keep his Mishra's factory so he can, you know, swing in next turn and at least deal two points of damage. And then I think he's eventually going to die anyway. Two cards left, unless, of course, he's got a Swords. Now they're counting the lands first, but, I mean, it's looking, it's looking very bad for Erwin still, even after this balance. And that's one of the reasons why Mishra's Factor, of course, is so good. I mean, balance doesn't affect it. A lot of sorcery speed solutions to creature problems don't solve the factory because in most cases it's not a creature when it's your turn. So they're counting the lands, making sure everything is uh, done correctly. And then, I guess, we're passing the turn. Or not. Yes, we are. Okay, so untap. Going to move slowly to the upkeep. No triggers there, so a draw here. Three cards in hand. Could animate, swing in, then he sends back the Suchi, takes two, goes to one. Animating. There we go, into the red zone. What's gonna happen next? Tapping two, there's a disenchant on the Suchi. Yeah, that is really good. That is what the doctor ordered here for Ervin. Disenchanting the Suchi is still alive. And if you're still alive, you can still win it. Tapping two blue, tapping four, five. Are we gonna see a Brain Geyser here? Brain Geyser, wow, that is huge. All he needs is a bolt. He's got his volcanic or a chain lightning. Yep, there's a chain lightning. Is this the end? It is, yep. But well, well done by Erwin, kind of clinging on, trying to get back into it. He almost succeeded. But you know against a, a deck like Counterburn, when you're on three, you know you're dead. But then again, sometimes you're really, really lucky and you can still win. But most, 99% of the times, you lose. And that was the case in here in game number one as well. These players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one game up for Clovis, meaning that we've got Ervin on the play, starting with a Mox Jet and a Tundra passing the turn. Let's see, there's an Island, no Flying Man and no Savannah Lines here. So no turn one plays, it seems. Turn number two, there we see a Blue Elemental Blast in hand by Ervin coming from the sideboard. There's a uh, Scrubland here. White, black, dual. There's another Island. So uh, no red yet for Clovis, but does have counter magic up at this point. There's a Plains passing the turn, so no pressure from either player. I think a Flying Man or a Savannah Lines would be good for both. Okay, there is some red mana in the form of a Volcanic Island, pass turn. There's a Mace, there's a pass. I think if you're Ervin, you know, after sideboarding, you're like, okay, my opponent is really the aggressor here, so perhaps he boarded in some extra mazes. Of course, Blue Elemental Blast against the Burn. And going for that long game, and we see that they're like quick passes from Ervin here. There's a Shatter, probably on end step. Or not, or is he doing this main? I think this is on end step, and there we see a blue Elemental Blast countering the Shatter. Are we going to see a counter spell on that? We see a counter spell on the blue Elemental Blast. So Clove is winning this counter war, kind of showing how important this one mana is for uh, for Erwin, who was missing a land drop, so kind of struggling there. So that could be uh, could be an important moment in the game. Let's see what Clovis can now do as a follow up. There's a city of brass, so he doesn't have a land problem at all. Ooh, this is really good ancestral recall. Also knowing that your opponent doesn't have any blue mana to do anything against it, you don't have to worry about counter magic. Yeah, very strong play here by Clovis. Can he now find a creature to put some pressure on the board? Of course, Erwin does have that one Maze of If. There's the pass. Can Erwin find some lands? Yes, he can. There's a City of Brass as well, so that's quite good. There's the pass. So a very slow start here to, uh, to game two. Whereas in game one, we saw that Flying Man doing a lot of business, a lot of uh, work in the early stages of the game. There we see an island, Badlands being tapped. Are we gonna see a Surrendip? There's a Surrendip, a free 3-4 powerhouse from Arabian Nights. 
does deal one damage during your upkeep, and Eren has an answer for it in the form of that Maze of If. So I'm sure Clovis has another creature to cast next turn. Or perhaps an answer for the Maze of If. There's an Ancestral Recall. Are we going to see a Counterspell against this? There's a Red Elemental Blast. Again, a card coming in from the sideboard. Yeah, this is tough for Erwin. Really needed this Ancestral, I guess, to resolve to maybe find some more lands. Passing the turn here. One damage for Clovis, I guess, from the Surrendip. Exactly going to drop to 19. After damage is dealt, there's the Swords. Is it going to live? That's the question. No counter for this. So uh, three life for Clovis, but he's going to lose the Surrendip. So he's going to go up. 222. And then drawing four turn. What are we going to see? There's a strip mine. Okay, that's a good answer for the maze. That's probably what the, the plan was for Clovis. Next turn, stripping the maze, then attacking with the Surrendip. And he played out that Black Lotus. Does that mean that... Ooh, he's going to take a time walk first, see if that resolves. This, this could be a big turn for Clovis here. Is he going to play out a big creature using that Black Lotus? Tapping two, tapping three. Are we going to see another Surrender? Wheel of Fortune. Wow, what an explosive turn here by Clovis. And I wonder if we're going to see maybe a disenchant, for example, in response from Erwin to get rid of the Black Lotus. That could be a line. Going to take a damage, go to 19. Yep, there's the disenchant. Then, of course, you're going to float the mana. Because then you're going to draw 7, so you can still use those mana. But I understand this decision here. So he's going to float. He's going to lose a Control Magic and a Red Elemental Blast. Gonna draw seven, both players will. Exciting moment, but remember, Clovis has an extra turn after this one, and he still has three mana floating. And of course, he's got that strip mine against the maze. So, I mean, it's looking quite good. Ooh, he's just taking his turn. It's kind of expecting him to still do something with those three floating mana. There's a Mishra's Factory. Tapping blue, tapping the Badlands. We're going to see a Surrendip. There's a Surrendip of Freed. What else are we going to see here from Clovis? Maybe nothing. He can just pass turn, have enough mana open to counter any threats from Erwin. And okay, going to use the maze now. Or the strip now, I mean, on the maze. And there's a Bolt. Going to 16. Tapping three. Are we going to see another draw seven? Oh, another draw seven. Very spectacular magic here. So after that wheel, we see the time twister. And I mean, this is this is bad news for Erwin, right? Because basically what Clubs did is kind of play out the cards that he wanted to and then said, you know, the rest of the hand, Mwah. let's play a time twister and look at a new seven. So played that Surrendip, dealt three damage with the Bolt. And then uh, going to go for a new hand. The, the silver lining here for Erwin is, of course, that now Clovis is tapped out. And he already used up his extra turn, so he doesn't have to worry about that. And uh, players again piling up. I usually ask my opponent, that's how I do it, to, you know, do you want to cut my deck? And if they don't, I usually cut my own deck. Um, but yeah, you can make these piles as well, I guess. To each their own. And let's see what Clovis is going to do next. I believe he already had a land drop or not. Wasn't that the factory? Okay, there's a Mock Sapphire. That can work, of course. Ooh, does he have an Ancestral Recall or just a Flying Man? Probably, yeah, Flying Man. For a moment there, I thought, does he have an Ancestral Recall to play out? That would have been sick. I mean, maybe you don't even want to play it out then at that time because you're going to have to discard. But then again, Erwin was tapped out, so you don't have to worry about Counter Magic. Anyway, he didn't have it, so we don't have to think about it. Flying Man on the board, he's got four Firepower in the air. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what Erwin can do here. I believe I saw an Ancestral Recall there in hand as well. There we see another Maze. 
Yeah, Mace is really good against decks with Surrender Befreeds. We see that blue Elemental Blast, so that can protect you from any burn. Or is that a blue Elemental Blast? Now I'm kind of doubting again. It's really hard to see. We can kind of have a little look in the hand of Aaron. I believe I see a City of Brass and a blue Elemental Blast. And then a white bordered card there. A white, white bordered card. But the other cards I cannot identify. Going to tap two. What are we going to see? Chaos Orb. Oh, that's interesting. He's going to use the Chaos Orb on the Serenip here. So despite the fact that he's got an answer to the Serenip in the form of the maze, he chooses to flip on it anyway. Could have chosen to maybe also go, I'm doubting like to maybe flip for the factory. Then again, if he has Disenchant in hand and his deck is full, then he could also just think, okay, I've got the Disenchant, so I've got the answer for that factory. Because it's just so nice to have a mace and a surrender Befreet uh, on the side of your opponent, right? Then again, Clovis is on 21, so it's probably a bad, bad plan <laughs> to try to win that way. But still, you know, I like pinging. It just feels good. Anyway, Clov is now taking the turn. There's another City of Brass, so could attack with both here. And deal one damage at least. I guess he's not, because he's tapping the factory here for a soul ring. Gonna tap two more. Tap four, five. Ooh, are we gonna see a Brain Geyser? No, a Mind Twist, it's even worse. Oh, that is killer here. I think it's gonna resolve. He only has one City of Brass untapped, losing his entire hand. And I have to say the hand wasn't great, but still losing his entire hand, that is brutal. Does it mean that Clovis is gonna win game two here and is also gonna take the match? Remember, he's already up a game. Come on, Ervin, you can do it. He needs like Ancestral Recall. He needs like some power card to draw seven, actually. That would be the best. There's the attack. Sending back the factory, taking one, dropping to 15. At least he's still pretty high on life. So he's got some time. Go for the draw seven, Ervin. Find that time twister. That would be perfect. There's a pass. Two cards in hand for Ervin. Again, animating, there's the attack, but Clove is probably gonna see, ooh, are we gonna see Disenchant here? On the factory? Yo, Divine Offering, yeah, there it is. So he's gonna lose the factory and no damage. Just the pass turn by Clove is okay, so Erwin has the option to kind of, you know, get back into this. There's a factory for Erwin. Could actually decide to start attacking with that. Ooh, strip mine not on the maze but on the factor. Exactly, I would think go for the uh, go for the maze. I mean, he's got like uh, you know four bolts in his deck, so he could use the bolts to deal with the uh, with the factory. And he wants to keep attacking with the flying man. Exactly, pass turn by Ervin. There's a factory of Clovis. There's the attack. So Ervin probably going to drop to 13. Looks like he's thinking about something. Maybe he's got a Swords. Nope, taking the damage. Passing the turn. There's another land. It's not really what you want at this stage in the game. Checking if it still has Summoning Sickness and attacking. That's, of course, relevant. Clovis just taking the damage. Dropping to 19. Passing the turn. This is kind of signaling to Clovis that he's got a Disenchant or some other answer to the Factory of Clovis. Then again... Do you really mind him firing off one of those? Exactly. I would just attack and see if you have one, you have one. There he goes, using the swords on the factory. But there's a counter spell though, so three damage, I guess, for Erwin. Gonna drop to ten. Oh, it's not looking great. Really needs like one of those like brain geyser, perhaps. He's so far behind already. There we see demonic tutor by Clovis. Ay 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 ay. This is getting from bad to worse. Remember, Clove is already a game up. It would be great for him to, to win here as well. And the way this tournament is set up, by the way, is we're playing five rounds of Swiss, and then we're gonna go straight to the finals. So the, the two um, players that have the best results are gonna play the finals. There's the time walk, there's the bolt. Oh, it's looking so bad. 
Airman clinging on, but he's on seven. He's looking at three more damage. He will drop to four. Then one Psionic Blast could seal the deal. There's the attack. Three damage incoming. There's a little maybe life total talk. Nope. Four. Are we going to see Psionic Blast? Earthquake. Okay. That's the same thing, basically. He's got the match here in round number four. Congratulations, Clovis, with yet another win here at the Atchman Championships. And that was round number four. Congratulations, Clovis, with winning this one. You're moving on, potentially going to the finals with that very strong counter burn deck of yours here. We can see it on the screen. Well done. And uh, before you go, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you're not a subscriber yet. Okay, thank you for doing that. And uh, the nice thing is when you're subscribed, you're not going to miss a thing anymore of this tournament because next week I have a round number five match for you. And that's going to be quite exciting. We see Club is actually coming back. He's going to play against another very strong deck. But more about that next week. And uh, before you go, please leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, it would also be great if you would consider becoming a patron of the show. The patrons are really what is keeping this channel afloat so please consider joining them it already starts for just one dollar a month and for that dollar you get some really nice perks you get to access the discord server that's only for patrons and also your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video and if you join pa patreon as a two dollar supporter then you also get a sticker of the channel so what are you waiting for check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for all the info and now let's continue to the famous end scroll Somebody can see. 